Hello, in this video I am going to show you how to hack your PlayStation Classic using the Bleem Sync Hank, Hank? Bleem Sync Hack on a Mac system. If you are on Windows or Linux, then you can check out my other videos that cover that process as well. Okay, next thing is you want to make sure you use your USB stick is plugged in. Ensure that it's USB 2.0. I've tried three USB 3.0 sticks, none of which worked. I read online that some people have got certain ones to work, but for maximum compatibility to ensure you don't get any problems, use a USB 2.0 stick. Okay, next you need to format it to FAT32 and rename it Sony. And on Mac, we can format it using disk utility. So if we launch this up, go to here, go to erase, Make sure it's named Sony, select MS DOS FAT, and that is FAT32. This should only take a matter of seconds. And once that's done, we're actually ready to download the Bleem Sync software. So go to your web browser, just Google Bleem Sync. I will provide a link to this in the description. If you just want to go there, it'll probably be quicker. And then from here, you go to releases. Download the latest version, which as of creating this video is 0.3.2. So uh, it'll be this version right here, the OS X. I've already got it downloaded. And so if I open that up, unzip it. So what you want to do is copy all of this, all of the contents into your onto your USB stick. This shouldn't take long at all because it's only about 70 odd meg, 75 meg. So in 10 seconds, it will be done. And once that's done, there's only a few more steps left and then we're actually ready to plug it into our PlayStation Classic. And I'm also gonna show you the process for putting a game on here as well. So just bear with me, almost done. Probably about two more seconds, one, two, yeah, okay. So now we're, we can actually add games. So if you go to the games directory and we got one and two, these are essentially the same folders the same content and this is the general structure of it you have a bin and a queue file you have a png file which is the thumbnail that you will the cover art i should say that you will see on your playstation classic make sure it is named the same as your bin and queue files also make generally speaking it's recommended that you use this sort of stock keeping unit for your PlayStation game as well. So just make sure if you're downloading, you know, a ROM or you have a ROM and you are it's an American version, make sure you get the you know the correct SKU. You can easily get this online and most of the ROM websites actually tell you as well. Okay, so we can actually get rid of all of this. And there's two sets of bin and queue files that the dot lick we could we don't have to concern ourselves with that at all. So this is if you have a game that is multi-disc, the game that I'm putting on here, Crash Bandicoot is not. So if I just get rid of that. And now if we go to my folder crash, I've already got it downloaded, the bin and the queue file. So the bin is like that's the big file that has all the game content. The queue has a bit of information regarding audio, for example, and the PNG is your cover art. Again, make sure this is named exactly the same as this. Generally speaking, use the correct SKU. If you need any help regarding this, feel free to pop me a message. Ensure that it's a PNG file. It needs to be a PNG, not a JPEG file. Okay, so you want to copy that, paste it here, and so if we wait for this to complete, this is the reason I'm really hoping that they do, you know, have better support for USB 3.0. I'm hoping that that can be sort of, you know, circumvented using pure software, not some sort of soldering because inside of the PlayStation Classic there are you know, they're the port where you can solder a USB slot to, but nothing like that. If it's a matter of software to, to ensure compatibility, that's going to happen sooner or later. Also, at, at the back of the PlayStation Classic, there's a micro USB port, which is generally used for power. Maybe that could have some sort of on the go solution, the OTG cables. And with that, you could maybe have a splitter, one to provide power, one to provide. I don't know, some other USB stick. So a lot of possibilities that could happen with the PlayStation Classic because even though it's limited in terms of when you buy it, 
because it's so easy to you know hack from the secret menu with some of the keyboards that weren't blacklisted for obviously for debug and development purposes and to what we've got now with the bleem sync hack that allows you to easily put games on so okay we're halfway there so just bear with me and it will be done shortly just a little bit longer and then i can show you the last two steps that you'll have to do on your mac computer and then we'll switch over to the playstation classic plug it in and actually play some crash bandicoot so it says less than a minute now so almost there it's almost there. it's, it's, it's that massive bin file that's 600 odd megabytes what I thought was really, really interesting with Naughty Dog, what they did with their games in, in PlayStation era, they put empty space or just empty data in the center of the disk, and they pushed all of the you know the game data to the edge of the disk because the you know an edge of a circle spins faster than the inside of a circle, so it loads faster. So that was a really cool technique, and a nice little hacky thing that they did essentially to get improved load speeds. Okay, ten seconds now. Almost there for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Yes, finally. Okay, so next you want to go to your game.ino. Just edit that with some sort of text editor. I am going to use Sublime Text. This is my favorite text editor. You can use whatever you want. In here, you need to make sure that you have all your discs listed for this particular game. As there's only one you know disk you, you just put scus dash nine four nine hundred so whatever the name of your bin file is you don't need to put dot bin or anything it'll automatically know that if the multi-disk game is for comma then the next id for your you know disk now you can put a title this could be whatever you want but obviously i'm going to call it crash bandicoot because that's what the game is publisher i'm going to put a naughty dog even though technically i think it was sony that published it but i want naughty dog name to appear below it one player game released it in 1996 but again this information right here is merely for the purpose of displaying it on your playstation classic it could be wrong that doesn't really matter but you'll probably want it right okay so if we save that one last thing to do one last thing and then we can go over to the playstation classic you have to do this this step you have to do every single time you add any new games or make any modifications to this you basically need to build a database or rebuild it the four folders here if we go to bleem sync double click this bleem sync okay so it can't be open because it's unidentified if you get this error you want to go to system preferences and go to security and privacy and wait for this to load go to general go to open anyway so and now it's opened it so this will essentially build a database of the games and at least built it right here you might be thinking well what's this tony hawks pro skater to you know doing we haven't added that and that won't actually work on the playstation classic not that particular game just this folder because this is just sort of an empty template file because as you can see the bin is zero bytes and this is just showing you the format of it again the dot lick you can ignore that and if you go to the ini file i just said it with text edit that will be fine in all fairness this so this is the general format that you require so if you want to add more games just increment this a one two three four you get the picture have a folder in here called game data and then Add your bin queue file, add your cover art PNG, add your or modify the game.ini, then you're good to go. But again, if you have any questions, just pop me a message and I will assist you. So again, have a new folder for each game. Put your bin queue and your cover art in PNG format here. Edit game.ini. And then finally go to Bleem Sync, double click this, and so if I just show you again without that error appearing. So if I double click it, it'll load up terminal, it'll essentially rebuild your database and it will create this system folder with this regional.db file. Okay, and that is it. So we're all set up, we're ready to go. I'm going to switch over to the PlayStation Classic, plug it in and I'll see you there. Okay, so what you want to do is with the PlayStation Classic, make sure it's all you know plugged in, you've got a controller, 
plugged into slot one the power lead you got the hdmi everything plugged in honestly did these are the official steps to get bleem sync working i've tried it where you know when the console is in a slightly different state and i found it does work but i'm just going to show you the recommended steps so what you want to do is unplug the power cable and now you want to get your usb stick make sure it is usb 2.0 because i have a usb 3.0 here that i tried i tried a couple of uh, of other 3.0 sticks they did not work i read online some people have got some usb 3.0 sticks to work but i would highly recommend 2.0 just because the compatibility seemed to be better okay so with the usb 2.0 stick you want to put it in the controller to pork it is literally just a usb port so let me it's a little awkward with one hand hopefully i don't break the stick that's the PSTV light that's just turned on. And now you want to plug the power back in. Okay, so now that the power is plugged back in, wait for the original light to turn back on. Now the, it, it's it's sort of, you know, not the nicest on this phone. Actually, you can see the orange light a lot better now. Okay, so with the orange light on, you want to click the power button. And if he flashes green and orange a few times, that's when you know the hack is successful. And what you'll get is this Sony Interactive Entertainment. You'll actually abruptly stop and go to something else. Now you will get your Bleem Sync hacked menu. And on here will be all your games. So we've got Crash Bandicoot. This Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 isn't an actual game. It's just basically an empty bin queue folder with a you know this image on there it's just to show you the format of copying your games over but this one is a legit one as i showed you on the you know the first part of the tutorial on the computer if i click x on here now this will load and save states work you can gain to the secret menu you can change the frame rate, you can change the region, you can, you know, do all of that stuff. You can add scan lines if you really want to as well. So let me just get it up to the point where we're actually playing it. And then I will end this little part here. Okay, so we got Crash Bandicoot. So, um... So as you can see, the controller is connected to PlayStation Classic, cl no, Classic, Classic. Click X, and it goes onto the menu. Insanity Beach. Can't wait for Crash Team Racing coming out on PlayStation Four, and you know all the other systems as well. Da, 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 da. Let me just show you, you working X and Square. Okay, so that's it for setting up Bleem Sync on your PlayStation Classic. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message and I will assist you through the process. And as usual, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next awesome hacky video.